UN Yo News, Why US Travelers Are Snobby Budget Airlines, Major US Airlines Posted Big Q3 2023 Profits, But Their Low Cost Counterparts Earnings Suffered. Is this the beginning of the end of budget carriers? As prices rise across the globe, many Americans are looking to save money where they can, including travel. Yet the most recent slate of earnings, earnings reports from major US airlines indicates consumers aren't necessarily opting for budget airlines amid an inflation economy. During Q3 2023, low-cost airlines saw sluggish sales, while their legacy counterparts watched revenues spike. Frontier Airlines, one of the large low-cost carriers, lost $32 million during Q3. Spirit Airlines, likewise, lost $157.6 million. Southwest Airlines, which is considered a hybrid, low-cost full-service carrier in the industry, tallied a net income of $240 million, which was a drop of roughly 30% from last year. It's not that people aren't investing in travel, quite the opposite. In May 2023, Spending on flight and related travel expenses was up as pandemic-related restrictions on international travel continue to ease and international destinations that have been off-limits for years become especially appealing. The big three legacy airlines, Delta, United, and American, have reaped the benefits of this wonder lost, which posted huge profits in Q3. American's net income was $263 million. Both United and Delta saw net income grow to $1.1 billion. In Delta's case, there was an increase of nearly 30% year over year. The leg lost figure, figures from low-cost carriers appear to be the result of a series of coalescing factors, says Helene, Helene Becker, a senior analyst at TD Coe, who specializes in airlines, aircraft leasing, and air freight. Many experts aren't terribly surprised by the numbers. Revenge travel. As pandemic era travel restrictions lifted, US consumers' desire to travel overseas spiked. So called revenge travel meant many swapped domestic trips for long hauls. This meant flying internationally on major airlines, something most budget airlines don't do. Many budget airlines are finding themselves looking for travelers as flyers opt for major carriers with competitive prices. This year, there was a pivot to international travel from domestic, says Becker. Full service airlines had a better quarter because they have more long haul international seats to sell and participate in, and for those who did fly within the country, Pekka adds that travelers were looking for accommodations budget carriers don't provide. Major carriers did better, in large part, because they have more premium seats available. If you, do, if you don't cater to premium, if you don't bank on royalty, and if you don't fly internationally, 
this year's third quarter is likely to disappoint. Jamie Baker, A. J.P. Morgan Chase Analyst, wrote in an August report. Business travel was also down, which reduced budget carriers' passenger volumes. Southwest, specifically, has put much effort into targeting business travelers and struggled to fill seats as business travel demand waned in the era of Zoom and tight corporate spending. Many budget airlines depend on lower fares to siphon price conscious flyers from full service carriers, but these major airlines have also been lowering fares recently, lowering fares recently to compete with low cost carriers who usually have a pricing advantage. The September Consumer Price Index report from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics BLS, shows the average airline fare across carriers has fallen 13% year over year. Generally, say experts, the people traveling during an inflation economy prefer to fly major full-service carriers. That's in part because they are largely higher earners who aren't feeling the financial squeeze as much and are willing to pay for the amenities body carriers charge for, like checked bags and seat selection. Low-cost and legacy airlines are very different types of airlines, and the budget airlines appeal to a very different type of customer, says Henry Hartwelt, a travel industry and airline analyst. No surprise, the typical customer for a budget airline earns far less than the person who is flying Delta. According to the research we did in April, the average household income of a budget airline flyer is approximately $78,000, and for someone who flew on American, Delta, etc., it was well, it was well north of $100,000, he says. In the current economic environment, you can see why some budget airlines are feeling the pain, adds Haltbelt. Customers have lower incomes, less discretionary income. They are more susceptible to high interest rates, and they are having to reprioritize what income they have, and that may mean they are not able to travel as much. Filling a necessary gap, there are a few key, factor, key factors to consider when trying to forecast what happens next for low-cost carriers, says William Mackey, a senior fellow for aviation and travel at the American Economic Liberties Project. First, he says, it's important to remember low-cost carriers fill a necessary gap in the market. If those carriers didn't exist, there likely wouldn't be any other airlines to service low-income flyers. If travelers were faced with the choice between paying more to fly on a full-service airline or simply not traveling at all, like he says, he thinks most people, rather than breaking the bank, would choose to stay home. The other broader element at play is that the airline industry is in a precarious position, as there is less competition and fewer airlines in the U.S. than we've had at any time since before World War I. There are currently 12 passengers scheduled airlines operating in the U.S., he says, which is up from 10 a few years ago. Low-cost carriers Breeze and Avello 
are the new entrance. Before that, Virgin America was the last airline to launch in 2007 at the industry's peak in the mid-1980s. There were 80 airlines, but a series of bankruptcies, mergers, and acquisitions have left consumers with slim pickings. Now four airlines, Delta, United, America, and Southwest, control roughly 80% of the market. Many flyers are choosing international destinations, which means they are booking trips on major airlines. Currently, JetBlue is trying to acquire low-cost carrier Spring, which could further reduce competition. Make sense, this is important, because even if there are only a relative handful of low-cost carriers, they serve as a buoy to keep airfares from increasing. The mere presence of a low-cost carrier benefits everybody, he says, as it forces the majors to lower their fares. If those airlines do go away, as Sprint might if it does merge with JetBlue, people will be paying more in every city and every route. Stake stakeholders like the US government may have an interest in doing what they can to keep low-cost carriers around. That includes potentially blocking the split jet blue merger, which is currently being hashed out in federal court. While Mackey's concerns circle the longer-term existential concerns of low-cost carriers in the more immediate, and their survival will depend on how well they are able to handle the current economy and higher interest rates. I think we will continue to have budget airlines, but how large they are and how many of them. A lot of it depends on how well these airlines management teams manage its tough economic climate, says Hartveldt. We are not in a depression or a refresher, and I think these airlines can and will use the tools they have available. They have available to them to work to work their way through it. This might mean leaning into enhanced royalty programs and simplified booking, which Frontier and Southwest, respectively, are introducing. Ultimately, even as the larger airlines pressure their smaller, cheaper counterparts, low-cost carriers aren't necessarily in a death spiral. It's more that these carriers find themselves in something of a wrong place at the wrong time scenario. This is an extremely uh, cyclical industry. There are up cycles and down cycles. And within that, up cycles and down cycles for specific airlines and types of airlines. It's a roller coaster and it's way too early to worry about the demise of low-cost carriers, says Mackey. I don't see I don't see this as a harbinger of a trend. Conditions were such that the majors were able to fill their flights and reap the benefits of them, but they have their own boom and bust cycles as well.